Okay, here's another uh, splice, uh, often called a ring splice or shackle splice. It, it's hi, that's <laughs> Charlie the bird. It's uh, essentially based on uh, on the back splice that I showed you earlier, starting with a, a crown knot. And uh, so I, I'm gonna pick the ring just because I kind of like it. So the idea here is that we're gonna splice the rope uh, onto the ring, and it's you know it's quite true you could you could do this quite simply with a uh, with an eye splice like just a regular eye splice and you know, it would work just fine um, but this ring splice is a little bit uh, nicer for this application in that once we're done with it um, the the the, uh, the rope will be essentially tied to the ring and then spliced down and uh, it makes a nice tight grip on the ring, and where there's a nice tight grip and not a lot of moving you know, back and forth, there's not much chafe. And uh, so this will tend to last a little bit longer before the, the, the rope wears out than uh, just a regular ice splice. So the way we'll, uh, we'll start with this is uh, perhaps we'll, we'll go with uh, two strands in front and one strand in behind. And we're going to be doing this uh, exactly the same way that we did our back splice, um, using a, a crown knot. Um, just uh, slightly more complex in that we're going to be going through the ring as we do this uh, uh, crown knot. So just as, as with the crown knot, each, uh, each end goes over top of its neighbor and points downwards. Uh, we're just going to be passing through the ring. So we'll start with... Uh, We've got two on the near side and one strand on the far side. So we'll start with the the near side, right hand side, uh, right hand strand is going to pass through the ring and over top of its neighbor. And the the far side is going to pass through the ring and over top of its neighbor here. And then the last strand is going to pass through the ring and over top of its neighbor. And uh, may look a bit muddled now, but as we uh, work this tight, you'll see that it basically is just a normal uh, crown knot formed onto the ring. So each one's over top of its neighbor and pointing downwards. And once we've worked this a little bit tight, and, and once again, you don't have to go too crazy working the super tight. I uh, get a couple of tucks in first and then start to pull it, and that'll really cinch it up. Um, that's how, it, how you can uh, attach things to a ring. So once we've got this uh, started, then we'll continue splicing down uh, at least five tucks. Um, basically exactly the same way uh, as we did the back splice. And once again, I, I've got this whipping here. You could remove it at this point. Just uh, you know, cut it off and, uh, and continue along. I'm going to leave it on here just because I'll probably be, be reusing this in, uh, in a few more minutes. Actually, before I do that, how about I just show this uh, the beginnings of this once again. So... We've got the three strands, two facing you, or on the near side, one on the far side. The right hand one goes through, over top of its neighbor. The far side one comes through, over top of its neighbor. And the last one goes through the ring and over top of its neighbor. Of course, each one pointing downwards. Work them tight, and try to keep a little bit of twist in the line so that they maintain their shape. And just work them snug. Okay, so we've got our crown knot again, and we can just start uh, splicing it down, putting putting tucks in in the uh, exact same way uh, we've been doing all along. So of course, uh, re remove the whipping at this point here. It'll it'll help you uh, uh, get the the tucks in nice and tight. So exact same thing, splicing against the lay. And 
trying to keep a little bit of twist in the rope. And the same sort of thing. So I'll just uh, we'll do a couple more tucks so you can see the, the finished the finished product. You can see once you practice this a few times, it really only takes a couple of minutes to do this. So, you know, instead of uh, living with, uh, you know, just using a bowline uh, to attach this kind of thing, which is perfectly fine too, but uh, the bowline is, uh, it reduces the strength of, of, of the rope a little bit. Um, like maybe even. Uh, you know, it takes about 30% of the strength away, so the, the rope that you're using with a, with a knot in the end of it, uh, like a bowline, you'll be lucky if you get 70% of its uh, final working strength. Whereas with a, uh, a splice like this, which doesn't take that much longer to do, you have 100% uh, of the, the rope's strength, and the splice part is actually 200%. The, uh, the standing part of the rope is much weaker than the spliced end because we essentially have one thickness of rope here here we have two thicknesses of rope so if you're going to be using um, you know a ring like this uh, for um, as a, a permanent fixture on your boat then uh, you know, spend the extra minute or two and, and put a proper splice in it will be a lot stronger and uh, kind of looks nice too and then of course you'd finish uh, in the normal way uh, you could taper and then whip, or just cut the ends and melt. And that's your uh, uh, shackle or uh, ring splice.